Germany's cities lie in ruins and the hopes of the Nazis lie in the dust. The gutted buildings of the Reich reveal the irresistible power behind the Allied drive, a power that all the vaunted Wehrmacht could not stop. Bismarck's statue frowns upon the shattered wreckage of a Krupp munitions plant, one of the many furnishing tools of war for the Blitzkrieg, Hitler's fast-paced warfare that was stopped cold and flung back in his face, as were these tanks which never left the assembly line. <laughs> Nuremberg in southern Germany, the hotbed shrine city of Nazidum, was overrun by the victorious Yanks. Of all the enemy's level cities, none reflects greater destruction than Nuremberg, where the Allied attack poured its full fury upon the spawning grounds of the Nazis. The haughty German eagle looks down on German dead, lying still in defeat. Over the vast stadium, old glory overshadows one of the world's most hated symbols. Here, where once thousands of swastikas flew above the goose-stepping troops, parading for the strutting Führer, and where he ranted to the assembled thousands, the troops Hitler once laughed at take over. The swastika will no longer flaunt its crooked arms above the Nazi shrine. With the situation well in hand, the Yanks stage a review. Newsreel and Signal Corps cameramen made this record of the last days of Hitler's Germany. The cleansing fires of war have purged Germany of Nazi power. Let's be sure it never again rises from her ashes. Supreme Commander General Eisenhower pays tribute to the men who won our victory. The United Nations will gratefully remember Tedder, Montgomery, Spatz, Bradley, DeLock, Creer, and many others. But all these agree with me in the selection of the truly heroic figure of this war. He is G.I. Joe and his counterpart in the air, the Navy, and the Merchant Marine of every one of the United Nations. He has braved the dangers of U-boat infested seas. He has surmounted charges into desperately defended beaches. He has fought his tedious, patient way through the ultimate in fortified zones. He has endured cold, hunger, fatigue. His companion has been danger. Death has dogged his footsteps. He and his platoon commanders have given us an example of loyalty, devotion to duty, and indomitable courage that will live in our hearts as long as we admire those qualities in men. A Jap suicide plane tore this gaping hole in the side of an American hospital ship. After machine gunning the plainly marked and lighted vessel, the pilot dove this plane into the Mercy ship 60 miles off Okinawa. 29 died in the blast. The 31 wounded are removed at an advanced island base. Nurses were among the victims when the plane plunged into the surgical section of the ship. At the time of the savage attack, the comfort was loaded with battle casualties from the Okinawa action. The dead reached their final resting place in the service cemetery on the island base. Many were men previously wounded on Okinawa to whom the extra shock was fatal. They are mourned by the nurses who strove so gallantly to save them. Yes, VE Day has come and gone, but we still face a Pacific foe capable of slaughtering wounded Americans. Buying that extra bond seems a small thing to do. The mighty 7th War Loan is underway, and the three survivors of the historic flag raising on Iwo Jima are here at the Capitol to fly that same flag. With an honor guard at attention, that tattered banner goes aloft once more. This flag and the unforgettable picture of the men who raised it on Mount Suribachi 
are to be the symbols of this new war loan drive. What better reminder could we have to buy more bonds? Secretary of the Treasury Morgenthau tells us the reasons we should and must. Today, each and every one of us should dedicate himself anew to the task of doing all in his power to bring this war to complete and final victory. There is no more important way in which Americans can express concretely this determination than by buying more extra bonds in the seventh war loan. The workers in the Boeing plant in Seattle set an example for the rest of the country by staying on the job. With the welcome news that the war was over in Europe, they turned out an extra B-29 and turned out then to cheer it on its way to Tokyo. Remember, as these people did, the hard road to complete victory ahead. We have cause for celebration, certainly. But let us not forget, as our Capitol Dome is lighted for the first time since Pearl Harbor, that we still have a great war on our hands. New York's Times Square is out in party clothes again, with the multicolored lights blazing in all their glory to shine down on a crowd that deserves to celebrate before they roll up their sleeves and get back on the job. With the lifting of the brown out, it's again the Great White Way. The answer to that strange death Grand old lady of them all has her day too, as the torch that has been a symbol of liberty and the statue itself is once more lighted to remind our enemies that freedom and democracy will never perish. Look, America, and work until Japan goes down in defeat. The purpose of I Am an American Day is to welcome our new citizens, boys and girls who have become 21 years of age and take their places in the ranks of citizenship of our country, and men and women devoted to our country who have renounced all allegiance to their place of birth and have become citizens of the United States. Our celebration in New York City, as usual, will take place in Central Park, Sunday, May the 20th, at 2.30 p.m. Thousands and thousands of our new citizens have been invited, and they will all be there. And I invite you and all the people of the city of New York to take part in this great celebration Central Park, May 20th, a Sunday, at 2.30 p.m. We will have a splendid program for you. I'll see you in Central Park.